Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today and thank you for joining me in 6x6 six six week. This is a week long of dedicated video projects using exclusively our new 6x6 DSP packs and this one's my slim milk carton. I love it. Isn't it pretty? This one is made using the Pretty Petals DSP and as with the other projects and with future projects I will show you a sample made in one of the DSP stacks and then I'm going to create the project in a different one. This time around I'm going to be making it using the Wild, the Go Wild designer series paper. So it's all the animal prints. So we've got, um, I'm gonna, I can't think what the animal's called, giraffe over there. We've got leopard and lion. Now we have, we've got tiger, we've got zebra and then we've got footprints, hoof prints, which is these ones here. Is that cow? I don't know. Let's debate. <laughs> We've got all sorts and I love it. I just think it's brilliant and I've used this on card projects and I just, I love it, love it, love it. So I'm going to show you a variation on this. It's going to look different but it's going to be the build is the same. So, okay, grabbing my scoring tool and my paper and I've got this one this time around. Um, if you're working in Imperial, six by six if you're working in metric keep this one at the full size which is 15 and a quarter centimeters so right depending on which direction you would like your pattern to go will determine where you do your first set of score lines so i'm going to be scoring these vertical lines first okay so i'm going to be scoring 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 so i want my pattern to go up and down if i wanted it to go left and right you turn it so it's left and right but if you want it up and down that's where you position it to follow my measurements I hope that makes sense. Okay, we're going to score and I'm going to give you the imperial measurements first. Um, I will give you the metrics afterwards, but as always, check out my blog. Link in the description bar. So, one and three eighths of an inch, two and three quarters of an inch, four and one eighth of an inch, and five and a half inches. And in metric, three and a half, seven, ten and a half, and fourteen centimeters. Turn it round. This part is going to be the bottom of your box. So again, score it at one and three eighths of an inch. This time at four and a half inches. Turn your paper over and score it at five and a half. And then in metric, three and a half, eleven and a half, turn it over and score it at 14 centimetres. So you're turning it over just because it makes it a nicer, smoother, crisper finish when you burnish and score and fold and what have you. So we're going to fold our score lines. The finished dimensions of the box, when it's completed and made, from this part to this part only, not the top part, that's um, one and three eighths of an inch all the way round. So one and three eighths, one and three eighths, so on. And three and one eighth of an inch tall, which is three and a half centimetres wide and eight centimetres tall. So you can fit all sorts of goodies in there. Loads of sweeties, definitely loads of sweeties in there. So I'm folding my horizontal score lines, and the one that we folded, we turned over, that's this one here, fold it back on itself. Okay, so you end up with that shape. Okay, so there's bits to remove, there is a piece to remove, and that's where we've got this bent fold up and down here, that's the top. Down at the bottom, you've got a little skinny section, cut that away because after all it is a milk carton and that's what we do with them and then cut up your score lines on the rest okay and then run some adhesive down this part here so I'm going to grab my fuse fold it over and push down and then fold in your two sides first sides and then the back that's where the seam was and then this one is the front of the box oops easy okay and then much like other milk carton boxes push with your fingers left and right oh it's a bit cloudy I've just looked up at the monitor it's a bit dull I have to brighten that and pinch and that's the box top done so I'm just going to close it with one of our clothes pegs or clothes pins this is the naturals one, so the slightly larger. The metallics ones are a bit small. I felt they were a little bit too small for this project. Uh, I've lost the back of the box again. There it is. So it just keeps it closed. And then a little bit of stamping. So I have got 
where is it the amazing birthday stamp set so this was kind of floral so I went with that pattern and that is from new stamp set can't remember what it's called I'm looking on my shelves and I can't see it nope can't see it I'll have to make sure it's written down in the <laughs> in my blog but this time because it's sort of a bit more angular I thought you know a birthday theme maybe a boy so I've taken this one it's for you and I've got wild wasabi I went with wild and wild you know, I'm, I'm that imaginative. And I've got it ready prepped up on my block somewhere. Oh, I've got dropsy. There it is. It's over here. So wild wasabi. I'm going to stamp this a couple of times. And then I'm going to go slightly lower. It's a very juicy ink pad, that one. And three quarter inch circle punch. That's going to go around that section. One and a quarter is going to go round the full one. And I've got the one and three eighths. And I'm going to have some glimmer paper. Because boys like glimmer too. Trust me, my boys do. And I'm going to lift the whole lot up on dimensionals. So one on the back of there. A couple on there. And I'm going to prep a bundle on here. Let's layer this one on first. Just over there. And then that one will go in the middle. It's for you. And then I've got poodle loops going on there with baker's twine. Uh, sorry, it's not, it's linen thread. So I've got baker's twine this time round. And if you haven't seen me show you this tip before, because the way it's attached on our card, you do get a kink. There's one there and one there. So if you just take a bone folder or some scissors and just gently run it down, it de-kinks it. So you don't get the bend, which is a good tip. Okay, a little bit of fuse on there and I'm just gonna create my loops. So all I'm doing is I'm just sticking it basically over the fuse. There's, there's no particular method to it or science of any sort. I'm just randomly sticking it down. And then we're backing off here. And box done. What do you think? I hope you like it. Six by six piece of paper made that amazing. Love it. Thank you ever so much for joining me. I hope to speak to you soon. Go back and check the other 6x6 projects if you haven't already look at the, looked at them and don't forget there's more coming out this week.